Welcome to a short PowerPoint and product demonstration of ScanSpec VPI, Virtual Product Inspection, an offline automatic inspection measurement and data creation tool typically used in electronics manufacturing. This system is a global leader for inspecting solder paste stencils, emulsion screens, and even PCBs, for example, inbound PCB inspection. Not only automatic inspection, but also measurement and data creation. This presentation includes three different sections, a brief overview of the company, a look at our technology, and then finally a closing as to why you would like to consider ScanCAD systems. As mentioned a minute ago here, we are a global company with over a thousand customers in 50 countries and we've been doing this for 30 years. Our first systems were actually installed in the 80s even before ScanCAD was formed. ScanCAD is an American company with locations both in across the US and in Europe. Uh, we also use a global network of distributors and sales representatives to support our customers in 50 plus countries. All of our systems are PC based, low cost, easy to use, multi-purpose flexible systems, as you will see. We'll be looking at a whole number of samples as we move through this, actual customer samples as we go through this presentation. As mentioned, most of the VPI systems are sold into the electronics industry, PCB assembly, PCB fabrication, etc. Over the years, these systems have been packaged with a variety of OEM partners, uh, some 12 different OEM partners of which I've shared a few of them on this screen here, Siemens, Panasonic, Tech, Universal, etc. Now the VPI system, the ScanSpec VPI system, is a automatic inspection and measurement system. So right up front, we like to declare that we are checking 100% of the part. So we really are doing a pass or a fail. Is this good or bad? We are using a user-defined tolerance, as I will share. Again, this system is low cost and easy to use, easy to program. Literally inspecting millions of features in minutes. It is multi-purpose, as you will see also with the different samples I'll be sharing, and it does have measurement capability. So in the PowerPoint, we have a number of slides here. For example, solder paste, a wafer bump stencil, um, here an alumina hybrid type circuit with gold conductor and whatnot, each with errors on them. But this is a great time to go ahead and actually take a look at a real sample. So here we are in the software itself, and I'm going to go ahead and open up a, a stencil example. And just right up front, I wanted to share how this system works. The green data on the screen is Gerber data, CAD data. The blue data is actually coming from the imaging system. We'll talk more about what that imaging system is in a minute. What I wanted to share right away is the way a typical stencil inspection is done, solder paste stencil, uh, by a stencil fabricator or a stencil user, for example, in PCB assembly, is they will scan the stencil, they will import the Gerber data, and they will overlay. I'm using the overlay button here, which will flip and rotate the Gerber data over the top of the stencil, and we will then perform an inspection. The inspection, as I mentioned, millions of features, literally in minutes, it shows any place where the CAD data does not match the stencil. So if I turn off the CAD data, the Gerber data, you see right away we have a bunch of error crosses. At the bottom of the screen, we can see that they're numbered from one to 57, where we say press N for next, P for previous. So if I press the N for next key, I'm moving sequentially through the errors. I can also hit P for previous. Well, it makes more sense to zoom in close when we look at these types of errors. And again, I can toggle the CAD data or the Gerber data on and off. So very quickly, we can see here that we have an opening in the stencil, but the CAD data is not is showing that there's uh, an opening missing here. So this is either a blocked or missing aperture on the stencil. Obviously not good for printing solder paste. As a matter of fact, we can even see some light coming through where the aperture, where the aperture was attempting to be cut by a laser 
and the laser stopped for some reason, and this aperture was not cut and did not drop. This aperture did not cut at all. I will now hit next, and for next, and just single step into another example of an error on this stencil. Here we have an alignment error. The stencil apertures are in a different position than the CAD data. This is typically the sign of a customer about to use an incorrect revision or version of CAD data or stencil. So this is a discrepancy that should be checked out before going into production because we will now be printing paste off the side of these pads. Not good. I will jump forward to yet another error. This is in a BGA. I can get close if you'd like. In fact, I can get real close and you'll see the actual pixels of this raster image data. And of course, we have the vector CAD data, the green vector CAD data, the Gerber data over the top. So you can see very clearly we have a partially blocked aperture, which is representative of a stencil that has not been cleaned properly. Here we have a completely blocked aperture, or in the case of a new stencil, an aperture that was not formed. So these are just giving you some examples of the kinds of errors that this system will detect uh, for E-form stencils, electroform stencils. We would detect pinholes and any kind of positional error, et cetera, et cetera, of apertures. So I just wanted to give you just a, a quick example up front of what that might look like. Let's go to a more complex stencil now. Let's pick a stencil here that has over 340,000 apertures on it. 340,000 apertures. And we'll go ahead and perform an inspection of this stencil right now. And just like before, what the system does is it compares the green CAD or Gerber data to each of the openings in the stencil. It's checking for location. It's, look, it's checking for the size and shape of the aperture. Whether the aperture is blocked or damaged in any way, it's looking for any extra openings or damage. For example, the pinholes I mentioned a minute ago. It performs this inspection in this case, for 340,000 apertures that are three mils, three mils or 75 micron in diameter. On the left-hand side, you actually see a counter counting down where it's counting uh, and as it inspects each of these uh, aperture openings. We have customers today that are inspecting stencils with over one million apertures, a million five apertures, huge numbers of, of apertures and will perform this 100% inspection showing exactly any aperture that is not correct. I would like to share that this stencil is a known good stencil. And yet, as you can see here when I zoom in, that we have these errors on this stencil. As a matter of fact, we have 276 errors. This is an example of a good stencil that had a very poor cleaning process. In other words, the apertures by getting close, you can see here that the openings have solder paste, solder paste in the aperture openings. Remember, these are 75 micron, and please remember there is a very large number of apertures here. And so you can see that on this wafer bump stencil, that if they did print solder paste, that they will be creating a large amount of scrap, that these will not, this is a horrible, stencil to use for actual production. Now, just like before, we can hit N for next, zoom in, and it will take you through all 276 errors. So, and as a matter of fact, these are the two errors we just saw a minute ago. So what would the customer do in this situation? They would clean this stencil again using an ultrasonic cleaner or other technology to clean the solder paste out of the stencil, reinspect. Once the stencil passes 100% good, only then go into production. So this is giving you a quick example of what this looks like when you perform a stencil inspection. Now that PowerPoint slide also had another example and that was solder paste. Interestingly enough, the same offline system that can inspect stencils, solder paste stencils, can also inspect solder paste. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this window up and we will zoom into one little area that we're working on here, because you can see right away that there is a serious problem with this printed material. 
So I'm going to draw a window around this and we'll, we'll even perform a different type of inspection. Again, as you look at this, you can see that we have over 15 different recipes for inspection. The first one I ran was Gerber Comparison Check, which is over here on the icons on the left. We, again, we use pop-down menus, we use icons, however you like to work, uh, or even hotkeys if you wish. Um, but in this case, we're going to do an aperture area check, an aperture area check, which is typically used when you're looking at um, printed or dispensed materials. What I'll do is let me adjust this so we say that we will, we will force a failure for any paste deposits that are less than 50% or greater than 125%. I'm also going to inspect just in this window, so I'm not going to flag all the errors on this board because there's literally thousands of errors on this board. If I just look in this window, perform an inspection, we instantly can see the errors that have less than 50% paste, and we see that the ones that are more than 50% uh, paste have passed okay. And this again is using CAD data, the green CAD data you see on the screen, the Gerber data. In this case, the stencil data that was used to create the solder paste stencil. We also would have data if you were dispensing, if you had a dispensing machine of some sort, uh, and we don't care if these are dots or lines or whatever, we will inspect to make sure that you have the coverage of material. We also even do dye underfill inspection, wire bond inspection, etc. A true multi-purpose, 100% inspection system. Oh, by the way, if you want to perform a measurement, then over here, uh, basically there is under coordinates, we can measure point to point. For example, I could measure from this point over to this point. At the bottom of the screen, I can see that this is 669 mils, an X amount, a Y amount, and a rotation of 13.48 degrees. Just letting you know that, that we have that kind of capability. That's on the measurement side. Let me quit out of this solder paste example, and let's now go back to the PowerPoint presentation where we stepped off into the product. I will move forward now, and you can see that we have an optical encoder, just giving you another example of how this machine can perform 100% inspection. And yes, it's, de it's detecting a 25 micron protrusion over here uh, or a, a 25 micron blockage. Films. That optical encoder was an example of a glass uh, product that's being inspected. In this case, this could be diazo or mylar or a silver halide film. And we're inspecting or seeing here um, mouse bites, pinholes, that type of thing. Again, let's go off on the product and look at a couple of different film examples of inspection. So we'll first come up here and open this, uh, this film up. And in this case, we're, we don't even have any CAD data. In this particular case, this customer would like to inspect without CAD data. And the way they do that is we're using something called micro defect check. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a window around the part of the film that I'd like to inspect and using yet another recipe in here, we're gonna do a micro defect check. And here we're looking for errors that are four mils or below. That's 100 micron or smaller, again, inside a window. We perform that inspection. And right away, the system will flag anything that meets that criteria. So here, for example, if I get close enough, we can see a protrusion sticking out of the film. Obviously, you don't want to print this on your circuit board. Here, the track is narrowed below that four mil threshold. Here, we have another protrusion. Here, we have a mouse bite. I can also, this red area is, is designed to help the operator quickly and easily see the error. If you look over here, we have a pinhole. This is a very, very small pinhole. Again, I have the red area to help the operator move around. Uh, we have a scratch. Looks like some sort of a defect in the track here. Another protrusion. Another scratch. Okay, just giving you an idea of the kinds of defects that you would see in a film type situation. Okay. Uh, again, these are numbered from 1 to 13 in this case. I went through all 13 errors. This is an example of using micro defect check. 
Now you may ask yourself, gee, can I use a, a combination of Gerber comparison check and micro defect check? And the answer is absolutely yes. You can use Gerber comparison check when you have CAD data, micro defect check when you don't, or you can simply use a combination of both. See, the Gerber comparison check is checking for certain size errors and larger. The micro defect check is for certain size errors and smaller. So there's a variety of different ways to run this inspection equipment. Let's now look at another example. I believe we have another film example here. Um, here we go, film inspection. Okay, let's open this one up. Um, this, this film, this is a PCB film inspection uh, of an inner layer. And this particular film has some very small errors. So we're loading this into the system. And if I zoom in, we can see that we have a very, very dense board here. And, we, and this is an example where we do have CAD data as well as, I'm going to run the inspection, as well as uh, we're looking for any errors that are two mils or larger here, okay? So it's now going to run through this inspection. And again, you could look at two mils and larger for the Gerber or the CAD data, two mils, of course, being 50 micron, and you could run the micro defect check for two mils and smaller if you want to find pinholes and mouse bites that are smaller than the two mils. So right now it's performing the inspection, again, comparing all of the data. And just to make it easier to see, we're going to turn off the CAD data and right away, in this one area of the film, I want to show this to you. Let's turn this off. Is We're looking here, and it flagged three errors in here as compared to CAD data. So basically, we have three errors in here where the uh, CAD data indicates there should not have been any kind of openings, and yet we see openings, OK? Now, also, you'll notice that there are some other errors, but those are smaller than two mil, smaller than two mil. And so what I'm going to do now is we're going to head, going ahead and I'll just, again, just draw in a window just to show these errors to you. We'll now perform that micro defect check, okay? Two mils and smaller inspecting in the window. So it found the large errors where there was actually a, a photo plotting error with the CAD data, and then it's finding those smaller defects that are in there that uh, are causing these kinds of problems. So this is giving you an example of, of the kinds of errors that this system will find. Okay, let's now move and we will look at the PowerPoint again. So these are examples of the film inspection. Well, the next example I want to share with you is a emulsion screen. The same system that does solder mask stencils, printed solder paste, PCB inspection, film inspection, glass inspection, can also inspect emulsion grids. And again, the hardware will show more about how that's done in a minute. But let's again go off and take a look at some examples here. So let's look at an emulsion screen. And we'll go ahead and perform an inspection. Actually, let's, uh, let me cancel this for a second. Let's draw a window again. Let's just inspect the area of the, of the emulsion screen we'd like to inspect. And I will say that we want to inspect in window. In this case, we're looking at errors that are one and a half mils or 75 micron or larger. Now, this particular screen comes out of the automotive industry. And this is an example of the kinds of errors that you would see in this type of environment. In fact, let me skip over those guys up previous. Here we have an example here. I'll get in close. Let's turn off the color for a second. See, our system works uh, with the CAD data in green. We have a color image that I can toggle on and off, and we have a monochrome image. And we can see that we have some sort of, of um, emulsion opening in the mesh. 
And if you actually print, uh, print a conductive material, material here, you would have an error here. And there's a variety of other contaminations on the mesh. And I should share with you that if you don't worry about openings in certain parts of the mesh, then we also have a mask capability, a mask capability. Uh, here is some contamination that is actually blocking the opening. So here we have a couple areas where we actually have lifted emulsion or emulsion where there's an opening, but we also have contamination blocking. So just giving you the kinds of errors that are on the screen. This again is an example of a screen that has either been damaged uh, in washing, uh, but this has certainly been a, a, a screen that has been used. It's been used. All right, back to the PowerPoint again. That was an example of an emulsion screen. Uh, I'm going to have some examples in a few minutes where we perform solder mask inspection on inbound bare PCBs that have serious consequences, but I'm gonna wait on that in a minute. I'm gonna wait for that sample to show you. Here's another inner layer inspection, ground and power plane, damaged inner layers. We have customers that are using this to inspect for counterfeit parts as well as counterfeit boards as well. So you can use this to make sure that you indeed have the right parts. The example on the screen is showing a step etch or partial etch stencil where you may have areas um, that need to be inspected as well and we do handle that no problem. We are able to scan and inspect populated boards as well as wire bond as I mentioned a minute ago um, as well as components. So we've got some examples of these coming up later in our presentation that we'll get into more detail. So anyway, that's giving you a, a, just sort of a snapshot of what we might mean by measurement and 100% automatic inspection. Let's talk about the technology for a couple of minutes. This is the system we're using. We do use a high-end flatbed scanner that's been modified for this application. <coughs> this scanner resides in the desk. It's held in a carrier under the desk. The ScanSpec VPI system comes standard with this desk, the scanner, this transmissive light box, this top light, if you will. So the scanner itself has a reflective or bottom light. We use a top light when pushing light down through uh, solder paste stencils, through holes in boards, <clears throat> through emulsion screens, etc. You provide your own PC. We do provide all of these arms and whatnot that come with us and the keyboard tray, etc. Um, so this system uh, can be set up on wheels to move around if you want. It's adjustable height, so it can be a stand-up bench or a sit-down uh, bench or desk as you wish. So lots of adjustments. There's also a place to store the NIST calibrated glass calibration plate, the NIST certified glass calibration plate that's stored in the desk. Essentially, this is a contact system. This is where the stencil or screen or film or a PCB sit on top of the scanner where we image with lighting from above and or below. So again, the scanner faces up, the part faces down. If you are inspecting wet parts like solder paste or glue or adhesive or those kinds of things, uh, part of our training will show you how to use standoffs to keep obviously from you know, <laughs> making a mess out of the part or the scanner. So there is no limit to part size. We've had customers inspect things up to uh, five meters long, for example, in the textile industry. We don't see that in electronics, but certainly in other industries, we see some very large parts. Again, we do inspect in the aerospace industry with large parts as well. But for the electronics industry, the largest we've normally seen is something, you know, back planes and whatnot, where you will need to image more than one image. Pretend this is a camera. We simply take more than one image and perform an inspection. Our system is designed to do that. So it is set up to, to, uh, to image very large parts if necessary at very high resolution with very small features. Again, the lighting is top or bottom. It does have that NIST certified glass calibration included. Again, that sits in a shelf underneath the scanner. You are able to store all the images and data. Everything I've been showing you can be stored for full traceability. Very important for automotive, for medical, and for aerospace, for your ISO certification. The parts I've been showing have primarily been inspected against CAD and Gerber data, but you are able to use golden parts as well. So if you have a known good part, you can compare that with a part to confirm the two are okay. Some customers will inspect, for example, a stencil when it first comes in to make sure it's okay against CAD data, and then they will inspect it against itself over time. They can do that as well as you wish. 
Because again, stencils and screens, you, you probably know, all have stretch over time. And you want to fail the stencil or screen before the stretch becomes a problem. The Scanapec VPI system, or again, virtual product inspection. What we're really talking about is the digital twin, the digital twin. In other words, our system is able to marry the digital data that you have for your parts against the actual part and to make sure they match before you go into production. That's the operative word. We have all of this done in the system before production. So we really have a virtual product inspection. We can image the components. We can image the boards, the stencils, the screens. We can image the other tooling that you have, the carriers, the pallets, etc., and make sure everything is okay before you get anywhere near your production line. Our objective is to have the highest possible effectiveness and productivity of your production line. So we make sure everything is okay before production. There's nothing worse than loading all of your feeders, have everything set up on a million dollar line, and then find out that there is a problem with the stencil or there's a problem with a component and then have to shift that to another production and you have to move the feeders, etc. That's horrible and we, our objective is to make sure that doesn't happen. So again, we are performing 100% inspection of stencils, bears, PCBs, the components, artwork, printed material, whatever you want. First piece, last piece, new product introduction. We are getting very, you know, inspecting at very high resolutions to very small feature sizes if you want. We actually have customers now going down to 12 micron feature sizes. That's mainly in Japan. Our Japanese customers are pushing the technology to the maximum. Those systems are running in clean room environments, in clean room environments. Obviously, with 12 micron feature sizes, they must be in a clean room. Use this system to guarantee your part accuracy. You are able to compare the board of the stencil prior to production, as I said, virtual inspection here. You are able to create stencil data from boards, films, and stencils, which I will show you in a few minutes, uh, which can have dramatic benefits for you in reducing solder paste defects. We have customers using this for the first article inspection, product changeover, new product introduction. The system is also able to generate data for assembly equipment and for components as well. Now, what I showed you a few minutes ago with the basic stencil, these are the six steps. You can import Gerber data or CAD data, scan the stencil or screen, overlay, inspect, review the errors, and print a report. You can then save the data for full traceability. You can save the image, save the inspection forever. The PowerPoint simply steps through these steps one more time. You import the CAD data, you scan the stencil or screen, and by the way, you can do that in the other order if you want. If you want to scan first, then inspect the Gerber data, that's up to you. Here is an image now showing, or a short video, showing the actual placing of the stencil on the uh, surface of the scanner. So just wanted to give you an idea of what that looks like. After scanning and after importing this CAD Gerber data, as you saw me do, it's important to align the two images. Again, we have the automatic alignment feature and we have a de-skew capability that eliminates any rotation errors. You then perform the inspection. This is done to your level of inspection. If you don't know or the operator doesn't know what level of inspection to do, there's an auto detect feature that helps the, helps the operator select the right level. In most cases, the manufacturing engineer will provide the inspection level that they would like the stencil or screen or PCB inspected to. But again, if not, we do have this auto detect capability. Errors are highlighted. The operator can then step through the errors to look at them, uh, if any. And in many cases, they can clean up or fix the error, re-inspect before they go into production. If it's a serious error, uh, be thankful that we caught the part before production. Yes, you can print a paper document, there can be a digital report, and there is full SPC, statistical process control data being kept on all of these inspections for quality control meetings in the future for your QA department. But there is documentation. In the case of stencil inspection, many cases, if it's a stencil fabricator, they will include the certificate along with the stencil when they ship it to a PCB assembly company. 
So as mentioned a couple of times so far, we are able to compare this stencil or screen to Gerber or, or a golden part. And we're just giving you some ideas of what that looks like. We can do the same here with a board and, and Gerber or golden part again. So again, with a PCB, you can actually you know, compare the solder mass, drill holes, etc. Again, checking for counterfeit parts, bad boards, etc. Yes, you are able to, to compare a board to the stencil without CAD data. So if you do not have CAD data for some reason, but someone did give you the stencil on the board, you can validate and verify that everything's okay before you get next to your, your production equipment. Can we look at populated boards? Absolutely, yes. In fact, let's pull up an image of the system right now. I'll go ahead and change from this emulsion screen, and let's go to a populated board. We'll open this up. I will turn off the CAD data, and we'll go ahead now and um, overlay the assembly data. So if I turn off the color image, you can see that we have some assembly data. And for example, if I snap to this part at the bottom of the screen, you can see that this is R6. It's component number 23, zero rotation. This is a 1206 package ID. And here is a, a part number. This is a Kyocera AVX part number. And this was placed on a certain machine. Well, it's really helpful to have the color image so you can actually see the populated board. The, the operator is, if they wish, is able to now hit N for next and they can jump to the next part, in this case, R9. Okay, and next, 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 etc. So you can single step through a board. You can jump ahead, for example, and, and say, I wanna look at this part here and just snap to that part. And instantly at the bottom of the screen, we have the data for that part. The bill of materials, in this case, U3, 90 degree rotation, a Motorola part number such and such, okay? So that is the, um, the ability to overlay CAD data, BOM data on top of a populated board and perform really more of a manual inspection. This is not meant to be an AOI system for component inspection or an AOI system for solder paste, inline solder paste or inline component, but it does a phenomenal job of first piece, new product introduction, type product changeover situations. So we can actually look at parts, make sure things are rotated properly, etc. Uh, again, making sure all the pieces come together in a perfect way. Uh, this is a good opportunity just for, since I'm in the system, to show the different outputs we have. So you can see that some 70 different uh, vendor outputs, machine formats. Um, I'm just scrolling down so you can look at those yourself. But there's a very large number of machines. Most customers today are using the generic type outputs. So uh, 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 CSV file, you know, for Excel, uh, generic width. And obviously we have outputs like GenCAD and other just basic uh, CAM type outfits, as well as direct machine interfaces for both through hole, surface mount and test equipment. Okay, again, I'll quit out of here, go back to the PowerPoint yet again and move forward. So, can the system scan a component? Absolutely, yes. Can it create stencil Gerber data? Absolutely, yes. We could scan a PCB and make CAD data. We can make centroid and billum material data. Well, let's go ahead and show that example real quick. Right now, I'll find a uh, board, just a, a, a basic board right here, training example. Oh, let's see. One that doesn't have any CAD data yet. So let me open this one up. Okay, so here's an example of scanning a bare board. So you can see this is, a, in fact, we use this for training. Just a simple board, has some surface mount, has some through hole. And here we want to go ahead and create stencil data for this board. So what I'll share with you here is our vectorization function that's included with ScanInspec VPI. So what ScanInspec VPI does, in fact, I'll even click here, create new apertures in the aperture table. It will actually scan the image, it looks for paths, and it automatically creates Gerber data. So here it found all this data. If you like what it did, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and merge. We'll merge that from a reference layer into our primary layer. And yes, there we have the CAD data ready to go. 
So here we have CAD data for that board and a full Gerber editor. You can come in now if you want and you can delete different pads, okay? Uh, you can draw windows and delete pads. You can turn your cursor into a pad shape, make it larger, for example, and you could replace pad shapes, replace, replace, replace. You have a full Gerber editor for deleting, editing, uh, editing, adding Gerber data, etc. Why am I sharing this with you? There's a very big benefit that I'm going to share with you in a minute. When you're missing CAD data for a particular board, this product can be a life saver. And if a board comes in that doesn't match the CAD data exactly, we're going to reduce your solder paste defects. So I'm going to go ahead and exit here. We'll go back to the PowerPoint and move forward. There's an SMT Magazine article that calls out a 43% reduction in solder paste defects. Yes, this is a published study from Motorola that basically is saying that the digital twin in this case of matching the CAD data to the board, when the board was fabricated, it didn't exactly match. And the fact is, this happens to you all the time. For those of you that are, are assembling PCBs, the board comes from... Uh, one country that the uh, stencil is manufactured in a different country. They come together for you to make the product and they don't match exactly. This becomes a real problem for fine pitch devices, especially in a lead free environment. So with the Motorola study, it said you don't have to do that. You use a system like ScanInspect VPI. And what we do is we modify. We modify the stencil data before you make the stencil. Let me repeat that. Do not make the stencil until you inspect the board and verify everything's okay. By doing that, you get a 23% reduction in solder paste defects. Published study. Let's look at what and how that might work. I have an example here of exactly that situation. So we have a, a PCB here. I'll open this up. Real live customer example. There's the CAD data in green. There's the color information. And as you probably have determined by now, the way our system works is we actually are able to color separate on the information that we are most concerned about, in this case, the pads of the board, and we perform an inspection. I'm going to run that same Gerber inspection that you guys have seen me run several times so far. And you can see right away that we have lots and lots of errors on this board. We do not want to run this in production. Now, if you come over here, let's turn the color image on real quick and let's take a look and put the CAD data on. And we say, yeah, okay, this fiducial, this fiducial had an error and that makes sense, okay? Because we're not going to put paste on this, okay? But this fiducial is lined up pretty well. The board's lined up pretty well here. Let's go to this side and look at this fiducial. Oh my gosh, that's horrible. I could grab onto this aperture. I can zero out my dial indicator at the bottom of the screen, lower left case, look, see it says zero, zero. And now I can move, I can move this and I can instantly see, go back to the bottom of the screen with my dial indicator, we have 6.5 mils of shift, six and a half thousandths of shift on this board. Not good, not good. And by the way, that six and a half thousandths, that can be measured in millimeters as well. So you can see right here. OK, so we have almost 1.8 millimeters of shift. That is not good. Uh, that is a situation where, you know, um, a lot of times what your operators will do is, is um, they will what they call tweak the board. They will go ahead and center the board and they hope the solder paste will center on these apertures on the fine pitch devices. And you may or may not create rework and have scrap because of that. The better way to do that is to use the ScanCAD system, image the board, overlay the stencil data before you make the stencil and come up to the top here and run our function called automatic Gerber rubber overlap. Okay. Now, in fact, before I run that, I want to get in closer so you can see this actually happen. So you can see the, the misalignment. I'm going to come here and manipulate Gerber automatic Gerber rubber overlap. Push this button and you see we automatically adjust the Gerber data 
to match this board. If I were to run the inspection again right now, instead of having hundreds of errors, we now have nine errors. Let me zoom out. What errors do we have? We have on the left-hand side, this fiducial situation. Lower left, we have a bit of copper coming in here. That's not a problem, okay? And on the right side, we have a fiducial situation. So we can really ignore those errors, all right? As a matter of fact, I'll show you real quickly how the operator does that. Error crosses, and we can delete error crosses in window. There's a hot key here called Control X, but you just delete it in window, okay? So now we only have five errors left. I can do the same thing here, okay? And now we only have three errors left. Let's look at these three errors. Oh my gosh, look at this. We have, we have solder mask that does not have an opening right here and right here, which means we're going to print we're going to print solder paste here and here, and we're not going to be connecting these pins to ground or whatever this is, probably ground here. Um, that is not good. And so that is a solder mask error that this system will catch, and this board will then not go into production. So this is a good catch. So I'm showing a couple different situations here where we correct the data so everything matches so you can make the stencil, and yet we still have some very serious solder mask errors right here. Okay, I'm going to exit again, and we'll go back to the PowerPoint. All right. So again, this is that Motorola study that had 43% reduction of solder paste defects by using Systems like the ScanSpec VPI system, one of the strong benefits for this. So I provided this data for you so you can look this up yourself and look at that published study. Okay, If you get the actual PowerPoint uh, from us, it, it has a link to that study as well. Okay, um, as I shared, this system is really designed to work in a PCB assembly and test environment. So we also have the ability to import the CAD and Gerber that you know about, we can also import the bill of material data. Not only will it create bill of material data, but you could import it if you have that data, so you then can perform that kind of inspection that we were talking about a few minutes ago. Not only perform that, but output to those different machine types we talked about. I showed you a minute ago the 70 different output formats, um, as well as creating the Gerber data in the Gerber 274X format. You can also output DXF formatted data if you want, now, basically data creation in all different ways here and documentation. Very, very useful, helpful system in supporting your ISO certification and your process control related to quality. Can the system work with components? Absolutely, yes. Let's go ahead now and, and take a look at a component. Again, it's always better to actually look at the system and just play with it a little bit. Um, this is a BGA we're looking at. Here, I'm going to open this up. Uh, the system, just like before, is able to uh, make CAD data. In this case, it identified all the balls on this, uh, this BGA. So you scan the BGA. The system is able to, I'll just zoom in a bit so you can see the balls, all right? The system is able to actually identify those balls, has their diameter, their XY position, etc. And we're able now, if you want, to go ahead and program this BGA. If you come down and you just answer the questions, what's the part number? What machine are you programming this for? Is this program for a Fuji, a Siemens, etc.? What is the package ID, contour, etc.? And basically the system is set up to go ahead and, and create much of this data automatically and the rest of it is entered by the operator. Uh, I'll just jump ahead to, for speed here to just say, hey, I wanna go ahead and teach this BGA as a matrix. Look what it did. It, it literally just created a matrix of XYs and this data is now ready to go ahead and output. I can go ahead and create this output. And we can come out here and take a look at this file. So you can see that it has the name, the units, what it was being programmed, machine ID, what revision name, lighting, all this good stuff. And it has the ball number, the X and Y offset from the center of the device and the diameter of that ball. 
Okay, all the way down. All 492 balls done that fast. Now in the case of a Fuji machine, for example, they don't want the data in that format. So let me go ahead and edit. Let's go ahead and file reset. And let me show you how those are typically done. In the case of the Fuji machine, they'll typically teach lead groups. So again, just like you were teaching, let's say, goal wing leads or um, J leads, that kind of thing. Now we're going to teach a single lead group, in this case for these balls. And again, these are the different types of leads that are being taught, in this case a ball. And it taught that lead group. And the system will then, now that you've taught one of them, you can then go ahead and teach all the lead groups of the same size on this one, okay? And you do the same for another lead group here on this side. Teach a single lead group. Okay, and then teach all lead groups of that type. Boom. And you keep doing it until all the balls are programmed, and then again you output. Go back out here to uh, Windows Explorer. All right, and let's take a look at this. And you can see now, I'll open this up so you can see, that no longer do we have a ball, uh, 492 balls taught as individual balls with an X, Y, and a diameter. Now we have a lead group. So lead group number one, there's 26 leads. It has a certain pitch, offset, angle, the, ball, you know, the type of lead is a ball or a B is a ball, and then the other information relative to that. So just giving you an example of how you can look at components with the Scan Inspect VPI system. I'm going to go ahead and quit out of here. Um, go back to the PowerPoint. So when I say that we're able to detect counterfeit components, that's what I'm talking about. That we can look at components at a very deep level, not only with the balls and leads you just saw, but we can actually look um, at the pattern uh, within the component and even the wire bonds, if you wish. If you have an x-ray system, um, that also is something that you might want to consider with this. Well, trying to keep this PowerPoint presentation quick, just want to share with you again as we summarize that uh, we have over a thousand customers, many of them with large numbers of systems installed in 50 countries for the last 30 years right now. So this is what we do. We are the standard in the industry for this type of process control, this offline in automated inspection, measurement, and data creation. So with a single system, we are able to inspect your tooling, your pallets, fixtures, and trays. We can inspect components, bare boards of all different kinds. We don't care if it's flex, hybrid boards, FR4 materials, you name it, we can handle it. We are able to inspect wet printed materials, dispense coatings, dye underfill, wire bonds, etc. Solder paste stencils, emulsion screens, we're looking to stretch, missing block, damage apertures. All of this being checked in a virtual environment before production. As well as the data creation I talked about. Remember the 43% reduction in solder paste defects by having the stencil data match the board, the job lot of board, before you make the stencil. So really, really important. As well as the ability to program your PCB assembly and test equipment and the ability to check components, again, looking for counterfeit devices, etc. Our objective is to eliminate surprises. Eliminate surprises. That's what this is all about. Virtual product inspection. Again, proven, economical, easy to use, offline, accurate, calibrated, flexible, giving you that traceable data. Everything I've shown you, those images can be stored forever. You have those images on file to show your customers, end users, etc. Multi-purpose, yes, inspection, measurement, and data creation on the same system. Again, those features down to 25 micron, and yes, we have customers going well below that today, especially in Japan. And upgradable, we have been supporting our customers for over 30 years, and those original jobs 30 years ago can still be opened on today's system. We maintain that integrity going backward. So yes, it's been my pleasure to present to you on the ScanSpec VPI system for automated inspection, measurement, and data creation. This is your contact information or contact your local representative. Thank you very much.